Working on a cruise ship is an extremely taboo job shrouded in mystery and rumors. What's even crazier is that even the employees get very little insight on what the overall environment will be like prior to their six to nine month contracts when it's their first time. Often leaving them in most cases wishing they knew more in the beginning so that they could have better prepared themselves for what was waiting for them out on the seven seas. When it's your first time working on cruise ships, there is a lot for you to learn. Not only when it comes to living and working on cruise ships, but about yourself as well. As someone that's worked for cruise lines such as Carnival and NCL, I can personally tell you that when I first started, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And there are some things I learned along the way that I wish I had knew at the very beginning. That's why for today's video, I'm gonna tell you 10 things I wish I knew before working on cruise ships, all sponsored by Surfshark VPN, but more on that later. By the way, before we start, I do want to put a little disclaimer out there and make it very clear that the topics that I'm going to talk about in today's video are not across the board for every single crew member. Every situation is different, depending on factors like the cruise line you're working with, your position, as well as how long you've been on board ships. You also got to take into consideration the pandemic, as things could have drastically changed for better or worse throughout the past year or so. So the first thing I wish I knew about cruise ships prior to getting on board is the stressful waiting period beforehand. So you know how you apply for a job like a McDonald's, there's a chance that you can get in interviewed the same day and maybe even hired that day or the day after or maybe even a week. With cruise ships, it's extremely different, as you could be waiting anywhere from one to six months, sometimes even longer depending on your personal situation. This is because there is a lot of little details and intricacies when it comes to working on board a cruise ship. And there's also multiple ways to apply to even get on board the ship in the first place. But there are two main ways. You can apply directly through the cruise line via their website, or maybe through a third party company. Let's say you are a dancer, you go to the auditions. That could be either through the cruise line or through another company. But anyway, when when it comes to this process guys there is a lot there is the actual interview there is the initial contact from the cruise line saying that they want you to work on board the ship and then from there you got to get all this medical stuff done the physical the drug test it can be a very elongated process and you have to have a lot of patience to even get through it now for me personally whenever i started working for ncl i had to wait a whopping 10 months to even get on board the ship this is because i was contacted from somebody i worked with at the theme park bush gardens over here in tampa they were working as one of the head had recruiters over with NCL and they have been contacting me around November or December of 2017. I didn't get on board the ship until August. So just take that into consideration. For number two, I wish I knew I needed money to start. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, every situation is different. Some in this situation is worse than others. So whenever you work on a cruise ship, like I was saying, you have the interview process and depending on your position, you may have a period of time where you gotta go to rehearsals or some type of training. I'll mention in a minute specifically what I'm talking about, but you do have this situation where you have to have your own money in order to take care of yourself throughout the entire process of rehearsals and training as well, because technically, technically, you are not working for the cruise line just yet, so they don't have to really provide you with much of anything. Let's say, for example, when I got contacted for NCL, everything kind of happened pretty fast with the drug testing and whatnot. I had to upfront it myself for the most part. And then whenever I got to the rehearsal studio, because we had about, I want to say about six, seven weeks of rehearsal, we were not getting paid right out of the gate for that because we hadn't earned a paycheck yet from the cruise line. So for most people, whenever you work, let's say on a cruise ship and you got to do uh, a show, they fly you out to the respective city where the headquarters or at least the entertainment headquarters is at. They pay for your flight in most cases. But the thing is, whenever you're there rehearsing, they may or may not provide you with food. Most of the time they don't, and you have to do all this stuff yourself other than the housing. So just imagine you got this new job and you still have to pay for your bills, your car, your insurance, all that stuff back at home. It can become very stressful. And you might say, well, somebody should be preparing for this. Sometimes the cruise lines contact you as far as a confirmation that you're going to work on the ship very, very last minute. You got somebody that works in the massage parlor, let's say they work for Steiner, they have to go to the school and get registered and get all the training that they need and then from them while they're there they have to pay for their own stuff and then they even moving forward have to pay for their flight or have to fare for their flight to even get on the ship it can become a very stressful process but even when all that is said and done unfortunately things get somewhat worse or better when you actually get on the ship depending on how you look at it for number three we got to talk about the overall workload when it comes to working on board cruise ships because this is of course notoriously known throughout the entire industry and even outside of it most of you know that the crew members working on board cruise ships are working extremely long hours almost every single day. You're talking about in the range of anywhere from 8 to 12 hours every day. Now, this is something that I want to talk about, and it's a big issue, because when people get on board cruise ships, even though they might have the knowledge and they might hear from somebody that they're going to be working a lot, 
it's kind of hard to put it into perspective and put it into reality of you physically doing that kind of work. So you'll see a lot of crew members that get on board cruise ships, whether they be from entertainment or what have you, depending on the position, they may end up leaving because they get there and it's a huge reality check. When you factor in other things like your living accommodations, which we'll talk about later, the people you're around, the overall environment, and just the fact that you're working so many hours, a lot of people just can't handle it. They get overwhelmed and they decide they want to go home a week, two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month in. You see it literally all the time. Now, personally for me, I didn't have really so much of that issue, but the thing is that problem that I had was right out of the gate, we didn't get straight to what I was preparing for to get on board the ship. There were classes and training trainings and all this other certifications that we had to get after we even got on board the cruise ship. And for a lot of people, when you factor that in on top of the actual initial work that you have to do, it can become too much. Now, my advice is try to get as much knowledge as you can. This is why I'm making this video, because if you push through it, you'll realize that overall, you are going to miss out on an opportunity if you were to leave, as opposed if you were to stay. Now, moving forward, guys, I'm going to talk about a very big topic that I think everybody should hear about. And it's not something that's usually talked about when it comes to cruise ships. But first, I would like to talk briefly about our brand new sponsor with this YouTube video, Surf Shark VPN. Surfshark VPN is an app and browser extension that will give you an extra layer of security by encrypting all of your information and data on all of your electronic devices. Believe it or not, there are digital pirates out there that are out to get you and your information. For example, they could steal your bank information, your pictures, your text messages that you don't want anybody else to see. But don't worry, with Surfshark, you'll be safe. But what if I told you that this VPN has a lot more to offer you? Surfshark VPN also allows you to change your digital location to almost anywhere in the world. 65 countries to be exact. Let's take my girlfriend Lauren for example. Hey! hey. So Lauren here is from France. Lauren, speak a little French, they know I'm not lying. Je m'appelle Lauren, j'ai 24 ans, je viens de la France, je suis aux états unis avec mon copain américain. Okay, thank you, thank you. I, I heard most of what she said. I need to work on my French. I guess I gotta re-download Duolingo or something. But I, I will at some point. Anyway, Lauren, what are some of your favorite shows from over in France that you may watch on Netflix that you possibly can't watch here in the United oh, States? Oh, il y en a tellement, 10%, Lupin, qu'est-ce qu'on a fait en bon lieu, les tuches. Okay, all right, all right. I've never heard of those shows. But here's the beauty with Surfshark VPN. Lauren, with these shows that she watches over in France, she can now watch them here over in the United States. Or let's say if she's working on a cruise ship or sailing, she can also watch them out on the seven seas without actually physically being over in France. C'est vrai? That's right. But wait, there's more. If you have an account with Surfshark VPN, you can add as many electronic devices as you see fit. So if you want to add 10 cell phones or 20 laptops, you can do so freely. Not sure why you would have the main devices, but hey, I'm not here to judge. There are also tons and tons of really cool features that are available with Surfshark VPN. Too many for me to list here. In fact, it would take three cruises for me to do so. Now, if you want to know more about Surfshark VPN or you want to join, just make sure you do so with the promo code SHIPLIFE. You'll get a ship size 83% off and a whopping four months free. Just in time for the holiday season, New Year's, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, whatever suits you. They also have a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try Surfshark risk free. So if you want to check out Surfshark, I will leave a link in the description box below. And Surfshark, thank you for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go ahead and get back to it. For number four, people will hate you for absolutely no reason at all. So this is something I legitimately wish I knew prior to getting on board cruise ships. Now I have mentioned this before, but the overall environment on board cruise ships can be a little weird. Just take high school, college, and military all rolled into one. You got the, the cool kids, you got the beautiful popular girls. These would be like the spa girls or the YCs, the youth counselors. You got the officers that are kind of like on top of everybody else as far as authority and coolness and so on and so forth. But then on top of that, you got the cliques. Usually the departments will stick to their departments and so on, right? Whenever you decide to deviate from the actual clique and plan on board the cruise ship, people will make up all kinds of things about you. Let's take me for example. I'm somebody that's very loving. I love being social. I hang out with just about everybody. I've been this way since high school. I was kind of like the cool, class clown, dorky, breakdancing, backflipping guy. So I was just kind of friendly with everybody and I want to learn as much as I can about what the life is when it comes to working on board cruise ships. However, that kind of backfired because even with my own cast and the people that I was doing shows with, since I wasn't hanging out with them 24 seven, they decided themselves to pass around all kinds of rumors. First they said it, you know, just kind of behind my back, then they would say it to my face. 
that the reason that I'm not hanging out with them is because I'm not black proud because I was doing this African-American Broadway show on board. And then they came down to the conclusion that apparently I don't like black girls and that apparently I'm sleeping with every girl on the ship. And that was something that honestly was very mentally straining and mentally stressful for me while on board the cruise ship. But thankfully for me, I'm pretty good with controlling my emotions. It was extremely annoying. And had I known this right out of the gate, I would have been a little bit quieter as far as, you know, how I am with my social life because it got extremely annoying. Now, also when you look at this too, because this happens to everybody in some way shape or form or fashion with the exception of the people that decide to you know only hang out and stay with their social groups you probably would assume that maybe you could alleviate all this by just reconnecting with your people back at home but no for my next point that i wish i knew this one is really going to take the cake for number five, I wish I knew about the communication difficulties. So I'm gonna make this one very brief and simple. Obviously, when you're out in the middle of the ocean, you can't just call mom, Sue, Aunt Petunia, whatever you want. You have to use Wi-Fi. And in order to do that, typically with most cruise lines, unfortunately, it's not free, or at least pre-pandemic. So let's say, for example, you've had a long day, you wanna call your mom or your girlfriend, boyfriend, best friend, you gotta pay for it. So when I was working for NCL, for example, we had to buy our minutes. I believe at the time it was, I don't know, 220 minutes for $20. Now that might sound like a lot of minutes for some of you, but you gotta think with the disconnections that are constantly happening, with the fact that everything is real staticky and breaking up, those 220 minutes go by like that. So you can understand, and it's either you're gonna go broke trying to spend all this money trying to call family back home, or you're just gonna suck it up and deal with everything by yourself, which can of course become extremely difficult. Now of course these days we did have the pandemic, and some cruise lines, like for example Virgin Voyages, they do give you free Wi-Fi. However, if you put that into consideration, the fact that everyone on board the ship has free Wi-Fi, you would imagine that the Wi-Fi is probably not the greatest. So either way, just dealing with really crappy Wi-Fi, trying to contact people back home, the best case scenario is that you can maybe send them a text message or a picture or something like that. But as far as physically and verbally being able to communicate with your family and friends, loved ones back at home, it can be extremely difficult and weigh down on you while you're working on board. For number six, we gotta talk about the mental stress on board cruise ships. Now this one is obviously a big one, especially during the pandemic, as most of you know. But the truth is, no matter who you are out there, Everybody deals with mental stress in some way, shape, or form. It's no different on board a cruise ship. Even back when I was working on board cruise ships, obviously we didn't have the lockdowns and the pandemics and all the rules and whatnot, but it can be stressful, especially when it's your first time. Just think, you're going away from your friends and family, in my case, my son. You got this high school environment, you're away from everybody, you pretty much have no privacy because you may be sharing a room with somebody. If not, when you're out and about in the hallways or if you're at rehearsals, you're doing a show, you're at work, you're always around people and on top of that, you're kind of disconnected from the outside world and then when it comes to your friends and family back home they don't forget about you technically but it's kind of like an out of sight out of mind mentality whenever you can't communicate with them as much as you like to they adjust to it you somewhat adjust to it but the people back at home will naturally adjust to it better because they're in their own home environment and they're still around the same life that they know and see it's just the fact that you're not in it but anyway guys getting back to it when it comes to the mental stress everybody goes through it and it's something that i wish i had known prior to getting on board cruise ships because i could have been possibly a better adapted to what the life was over going to be like overall and when it comes to this guys just looking at the people that are working on board cruise ships now as most of you know even though i'm currently not working on cruise ships anymore i'm in constant contact with a lot of my friends that are on board and things are more stressful than ever just to give you an example, these days, every single crew member, regardless of their status or how long they've been working on ships, they all have to go through a quarantine period where they are stuck in a room anywhere from 10 days up to 14 days or two weeks. Now, I know that might not sound like a lot, and some crew members are fortunate enough to get a balcony room like a guest cabin, but in other cases, some aren't. Personally, I remember there was a time where we had a neurovirus outbreak on my ship, and we were stuck pretty much in our cabin for a week. Now, I know, again, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're in this tight little container on this giant floating hunk of metal, it can weigh heavy on you, especially knowing that you can't really get in contact with your family in the way that you want to. You start getting into your thoughts, and one thing leads to another. Next thing you know, you're just kind of on the side of just being extremely mentally depressed or just going through overall mental stress, and it's never a good thing. For number seven, I wish I knew about the work and social life on board cruise ships. Now, of course, contained with this, I am going to talk about the infamous hooking up, the bed wrestling, and the relationships that take place on board cruise ships. Because for those of you that have never worked on board a cruise ship, this may be a hard concept for you to grasp, 
but your social and work life is legitimately mixed together, fused into one. So relationships are unavoidable, hooking up is unavoidable, this is why it's allowed to happen aboard cruise ships. Just for reference guys, if the cruise lines decided to make this a rule that there were no relationships allowed, no hooking up allowed, there would be a large amount of people that would be getting fired, I can promise you that. Now, just getting into all of this, guys, on board the cruise ship, I just wish I knew how the overall environment was because whenever you get on ships, you realize very quickly that you don't really have much privacy, even with your own friends that are on board the ship. Virtually anything you say could spread like wildfire because remember, still, high school like college environment. So everybody's just always talking. There's a lot of gossiping going on, which can get very annoying, and especially if you think you have some trusted friends on board, it can uh, you know, surprise you, it can shock you. You can say that you don't like Sally Sue, and next thing you know, the entire cast of the show that you're doing on board the ship knows it. Or you could say that maybe you just don't like being on ships, and next thing you know, you're getting pulled into the office to talk to your manager, discussing if you wanna go home or not. I've seen this stuff happen literally all the time. Now, going into the juicy stuff when it comes to the hooking up and relationships it's different on board ships the dynamic is changing on board ships it's changed completely whenever you're working on board cruise ships people don't really care about your actually don't at all they don't care about your at-home status the stuff doesn't matter now this can be a positive and a negative when it comes to the guys and girls on board cruise ships regardless of what your preference is because you can essentially fake to be anybody that you want because the only thing that people are looking at for the most part, is your status or your position on board the ship and kind of more so your personality and how you are on board the ships because whenever you're there, you can weed out the people that are down, you know what I mean? The people that are willing to do the bed wrestle thing because they kind of expose themselves very quickly on board. They're usually the outgoing ones that are at the crew bar every night. Now, and I'm saying that's not all of them. Personally, for me, I'm a people watcher, so I was there a lot. But either way, when you're looking at this, guys, things kind of happen fast, right? Think about it. You're on a cruise ship with beautiful people traveling to some of the most beautiful places on planet earth naturally the cruise lines are going to hire very outgoing beautiful energetic people that have big personalities as well so when you combine all that together it creates a recipe for people to be a little bit more uh you know close to each other and of course there is a factor that you could potentially be bored on board the cruise ship there isn't a lot to do if you're a crew member you can go to the crew bar you can work out and you can stay in your room and watch movies, but that can get very lonely too. So next thing you know, you're doing Netflix and chill and bada bing, bada boom, somebody's hooking up, somebody's cheating or whatever the case is. You got the lonely aspect where you might have a boyfriend, girlfriend at home, but you need a little bit of comfort while on board the cruise ship. Now given most of these relationships that happen on board the cruise ship don't really ever work out. I've seen a couple times where it did, but you get my point here. It can be a very interesting environment and it's something that I wish I knew prior to even getting on ships in the first place. So for number eight, I wish I knew about the living accommodations prior to working on board cruise ships. Now this topic and where you live on board the ship as far as your cabin does depend heavily on your position on board, the number of years you've been working, and the cruise line you've been working for. Remember, there's factors, all right? But I was very fortunate to have my own room when working for NCL and I was very uh, happy about it. However, it did come with somewhat of a price that needed to be paid. But prior to even getting to that room, whenever we were in rehearsals with NCL, that was a big talk of the town. Everybody was curious as to what their overall cabin was gonna look like for their six month stay on board the ship. So naturally, you're gonna go talk to the veterans and kind of get a good read as far as what your accommodation is gonna be like and what's gonna be there, what's not gonna be there, stuff like that, right? But the thing is, you're gonna hear all these terms like the officer cabin, the petty officer cabin, the Jack and Jill, the double occupancy. Right, but most of the time, whenever you look these up on Google, you're not gonna get the results that you're looking for. And very seldom you're gonna see the people that you're talking to, the veterans, have good enough pictures that give you a real depiction or idea as far as what your living accommodations was really gonna be like whenever you get on board. So for me, I have what's known as a Jack and Jill cabin. It's a very small dorm room-like accommodation and we had to share the bathroom. It was called a toilet. It's a shower and toilet combined. It's very disgusting. And I shared it with the guy next to me. Now, I didn't have too much of a problem with it, and also it came with a lot of cool amenities, like, you know, room service, and I had all these other things that came in with the room that was actually really nice, and I was able to put homey touches on it. But the problem with all of this, everybody that didn't have this type of room that had to share, they all wanted to come into your space, especially when it came to, let's say, me being a straight male and having girls around, they knew what kind of room I had. They knew I had room service. So just imagine, let's say you're in a relationship, you're on board the ship, and you got people constantly coming at you because of your status, and because of the fact they know you have your own room that's something that a lot of people that have their own room kind of use as far as like a, a strategy to you know bed wrestle but my point is there's just a lot of pros and cons when it comes to the room accommodations whether you have your own room or not and uh, it can be a little annoying 
For number nine, I wish I knew you could go broke on board cruise ships. Now I will say this, I do have to thank my prior experience working for the Harlem Globetrotters and touring that gave me a little bit of understanding as far as what the overall dynamic was like whenever you're away from home and you're getting paid. Because overall, I didn't go back home broke, but there was a point in time where I kind of got a little carried away. So here's the thing, on board cruise ships, whenever you get paid, they give you what's called an ocean pay card. Now this is different depending on the cruise line you're working with, but I'm speaking about NCL, right? You get an ocean pay card and they deposit all your money onto that card. However, they don't really go into full detail, but you can go to the financial department and make sure your money is you know, dispersed and distributed a little bit to maybe go home, maybe go to your actual bank, and then some on the ocean card for spending. You can also set spending limits of like $300, $500, but unfortunately a lot of people don't really partake in this. So what'll happen is on board the ship, whenever you buy something at the crew bar, you go to the guest area and you buy a drink, you don't pay for it outright. You rack up a tab or debt and you pay it at the end of the month. So as you can imagine, this could become extremely dangerous, especially at the crew bar. Let's say you're at the crew bar and typically when you go there, the drinks are usually pretty cheap. You can get a beer for like 75 cent or a dollar. However, if you're doing this every day, you're one of those people, it adds up very, very quickly. Let's take me for example. There was a point in time, me being a social person, I would hang out with everybody and knowing full well there are people with me that didn't make nearly as much money as I was making working on the ship, I had no problem buying them drinks. I was just a friendly guy, right? So there'd be guys I'd be hanging out with that worked in the galley or they were room stewards and I knew how hard they were working that day, I would buy them two beers. But when you make that a habit and they expect it and I just kind of, you know, I automate it, I end up with hundreds of dollars in debt or a tab basically that I have to pay off at the end of the month when I get my check. Now I know this was very, very stupid, but it just gave me so much gratification. I was happy seeing these people that were able to get a drink after a long day. But it got to a point to where you have some people out there that legitimately spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single month on drinks and shore excursions and whatnot because naturally on the ship, it kind of brings that out of you. I remember when I was working for NCL, we had this show called Choir of Man. There were the guys, these uh, British guys, basically what they would do is just kind of drink their life away after every single show. Not in a bad way, but it was just kind of what they wanted to do. They had a lot of fun. They kind of made it somewhat of a game to see who can rack up the most debt as far as like a bar tab. One of them, I believe, ended up racking up to, I don't know, it was like seven, eight hundred dollars just on drinks alone for the month. Now, I don't know if some people might see that as crazy or not. I know some people spend that on the cruise as a passenger, but still, when you're there to make money, you can add up very quickly, and that's not something I advise anybody to do. So just reminder, if you're gonna work on a cruise ship for the first time, just try to keep track of your finances and make better decisions, because at some point, you do gotta go broke, which is gonna eventually lead to my last topic for today's video. Now, before we dive into our last topic for today's video, guys, since you made it this far, I guess you're kind of enjoying the video, please do me a huge favor, it goes a long way with YouTube, smash that like button, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already, that way you can get notified whenever I post more videos like this. And before I continue, guys, I do wanna let you know what happened to my lip, because I know some people are probably worried about it, some really don't care, but just briefly, guys, I was in a car accident a couple days ago, and unfortunately, it wasn't my fault, by the way, there were cops watching and everything, but the occupant of the vehicle that I was involved in the accident with assaulted me and punched me in the face, and here is the overall result. I do have pictures, but I don't think YouTube would like them too much. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of red stuff. But anyway, guys, hit that like button. Let's go ahead and get to the last one. So for number 10, I wish I knew about the real world adjustment after your cruise ship contract. So here's the deal, and this is something I kind of became accustomed to with my Globetrotter contracts because I would leave for months and months on end and have to come back home. It is a little different on a cruise ship because the overall environment on board a cruise ship is kind of simple to say the least, and the whole dynamic of communication, just being social it overall is just different when you're on a cruise ship. So when you go from, let's say, being able to hook up like that just because of the type of room that you have or the status that you have on board to having to go back and then try to communicate with girls or guys, the dynamic, again, is very different. Different. Also, you go from maybe being able to alleviate your bills while you're on the cruise ship and maybe not having to drive to places. Whenever you get back home, it is definitely a major reality check. Now, a lot of people, unfortunately, that work on board cruise ships, typically they can't handle it right away because usually this is how the process goes. You go home with a little bit of money, enough to continue paying your bills for a certain amount of months. But the thing is, whenever you get back home, when you talk about the mental adjustment, the actual physical adjustment of driving all over the place, and the fact that you now have bills, potentially even more bills that you gotta pay, it can become a little much. So the first month is always an adjustment period, and then there's usually a month or two when you are kind of getting used to being back home and you're used to it, but then, and usually within like month four or five, you kind of get a little stressed out if you are even home for that long because most crew members, typically they end up saying the famous words, 
I'll just do one more contract. This is because the real world is stressful. And then when you get on the ship, you know that environment. You're used to that environment. That environment is simple and it's an easier dynamic to navigate around as opposed to being in the real world with all the crazy people. So this is something that I do wish I knew prior to getting on board cruise ships. Cause I remember my first time when I got off, all I wanted to do was get back on. Cause I'm like, oh man, I don't know how I'm going to adjust to this. There are always gonna be pros and cons to everything and hindsight is 2020, as they say. I just wanna put this video out there because I do believe that first of all, this type of job is something that everybody that is able to do it should actually do because it gives you a, a scenario that maybe you thought were taboo and foreign, but you might actually love it down the road and then it'll help you later down in life as well, just having this overall experience. But I also believe that not just cruise lines, but if other jobs had kind of like a things you need to know before you start kind of package deal, jobs would overall go a little bit smoother and better down the road but i am going to leave it right here guys let me know what you think about all of this if you are a crew member a former crew member i would love your input in the comment section below if you never worked on a cruise ship and have no desire to do so let me know if you found this video enjoyable educational or it got any type of value out of it i would really appreciate it guys i do have more videos coming out well after my lip heals because i gotta ice it after this it's already swollen especially just from talking guys but i appreciate all of you thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one Take it easy.